Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to go through the process of creating a login form using Bootstrap. The idea of this tutorial is to give you a sort of basic layout for a login form and show you everything you'd need and then once it's done you'll have something you can play around with, maybe change the spacing, change the colors, that kind of thing. Um, one thing I will say is that we're not going to go over client side validation in this video, but if you do want me to make a separate video on that, let me know and I can do that for you. Uh, but let's get started. So the first thing we need is to set up the HTML file. Uh, so at the moment I just have a index.html file. Um, let's add everything we need. So we of course need HTML tags. We need head tag. And we also need body tag. And I'm just going to add a quick title. Title. And we'll just put login so we know what it is. Uh, the next thing we need is the CSS from Bootstrap. So if you go to the Bootstrap website, which is here, you can just Google Bootstrap and you should be able to find it. There's some CSS here we need to copy into the head tag, the code editor, and paste it in. There we go. Hang on. Let me just put word wrap on. That would be quite useful. Uh, otherwise, you'll be scrolling all the way back. So let's get started. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is add a class. Just add a background on the body. So I'm going to go with background info, which will give us a nice blue background, or it should do anyway if we go to Mozilla. There we go. So it gives us a nice blue background. Um, our actual login form is going to be white. That's why a good contrast there. Uh, we're going to be using a shadow as well. So if you use a dark background, the shadow might not show up that well. Um, but that might not be too big of an issue for you. You can get rid of the shadow if you want. Um, so let's start off. So we'll do, oh, create a div. We'll do div. Sorry, my mic is in the way by um, of the keyboard, by the way, which is why I sometimes struggle, I sometimes struggle to type. Uh, class, and we'll get a class of container. Um, we're going to make this responsive. So the container will just um, change the size of the container based on the width you know, at certain breakpoints, which is quite useful. Um, so we'll get started on the actual uh, container for the login form. So this has got quite a few classes, so bear with me. Um, the first one is row, and create a row. Uh, VH100, so what this will do is it'll set the height to the height of the viewport, I think. Yeah, the, the viewport, I don't think I'm right in saying that. Um, the reason why we're doing this is because we want to essentially center the form in the middle of the screen, no matter what size screen it is. So we don't want to declare uh, an explicit height. We just want to go with the height of the viewport. Uh, and in order to put it in the middle, we're going to do align items center. And then justify content center. So align item center will center vertically and justify content center will center horizontally. Um, so using this, we should be able to get something in the middle of the screen, which would be good. Um, so now we've got the div for the actual, that's going to contain the actual login form. So for this, um, because we're making it responsive, we're going to do some column stuff. So we'll do column SM8. So it'll be eight columns wide on a small screen. Call MD six. So on a medium screen, it'll be six columns and then call LG four. So large and above, it'll be four columns wide. Um, it'll keep a fairly consistent size across all uh, devices, which is good. Um, I'm going to add a background. If we don't add a background, it'll just be transparent and it'll look very good. Uh, we're going to do rounded as well. So what this will do is it'll round the edges of the actual div, um, which gives it a sort of much softer look. Um, you don't want, I mean, it depends on what style you're going for. You could have sharp edges, but I quite like having rounded edges. Uh, P4, which just adds four padding on each side. Um, that'll just keep the content away from the edges, which will look a lot better. And then shadow, uh, which will add a, a drop shadow, which will just give it, it'll just make it pop a little bit, which is good. Um, I sort of talk as if I, I'm good at designing things, but I'm actually not very good. Um, but you know, you, you fake it till you make it, I suppose. So what I'm going to do now is 
one of the things I like to do, and you don't have to do this, but I quite like it, I think it looks nice, is add a logo. Um, so I'm going to pull in my YouTube logo just into Visual Studio Code. Looks very nice. Um, and then we'll, we'll get started on this. And it'll be good because it also gives us some content. I think if we look at it now, uh, if we go to, and I'll bear with me, there we go. Yeah, oh yeah, so we can see it. So this is the uh, the start of it. So you can see the shadow on it and it's got rounded corners and a white background. So it's looking okay so far, but not much content. Um, so this div is gonna contain our image. So we're gonna do another row. Um, that way we can do another justify content, but within this row, uh, just to center the image. So we'll do justify content center. MB4, now spacing is a big part of forms and just really anything. Uh, when it comes to web design, keep consistent spacing, it'll look a, a lot nicer. So for pretty much everything, we, we're we gonna be using MB4. Um, now we just need to do an image tag. And the source is gonna be equal to logo.png. And the class, we're gonna add a width to this to keep a consistent width, which will sort of um, if we don't do this, the image will be massive. So if we add a width to it, it'll shrink it down to the size of the width. And then we're just going to close that. There we go. So we should, if we go back to Mozilla or whatever browser you're using, we should see an image. Which is, and there we go. It looks nice. Um, and it's not massive either. If we got rid of that width, it would, uh, yeah, it'd, it'd take up the entire screen. Um, so the next part will actually do the form itself. So we'll do a form tag. Again, sorry, my bad typing because I can't see my keyboard. I really need to position my mic somewhere else. Um, so we'll do a div and we'll add class MB4 again to this to keep consistent spacing. Um, this will actually be the spacing between, so the, this div here will contain, uh, I think, email. Um, so then, and then we'll have another div below it, which will be password and then another div that will be checkbox and then the button to actually log in, uh, and each will have MB4 on it. Um, so we do label, which will be the label for the email. So we'll specify that here for email and then we'll add a class from label and we'll just put email email address. Oh, I don't know why that's created a address tag. There we go. Email address. And the next will be the next thing will be the actual input. So if we do input type, we'll specify email. Um, I might be wrong on this, but I think type helps um, password generators and stuff. So if you if you use something like LastPass, um, it'll know where to put the email, which is quite useful. Um, so it makes it a lot nicer to use. Uh, with password managers. Um, I think that's how it works, but uh, I'm not too sure. Um, form form control is a class for this. Uh, we're going to add an ID, which is just the same as this for up here. So it's for the ID email. And then we're going to add some accessibility stuff. So ARIA described by email help. And we'll specify this email help below. Just add another div. So this will be for email help. So we do ID. Oh, sorry. ID equals email help. And it's got another class, which will be form text. And then this will appear below the actual input. Um, so you might want to put something like we'll never we'll never share your email just a disclaimer uh, and there we go that's our first input so if we do this there we go email address and then the actual input and then the little thing below it the little bit of text we'll never share your email so we can pretty much copy and paste this now um, Essentially, the password is going to be the same, except instead of for email, it's going to be for password. Again, you can copy and paste that and put type. It's also going to be password. Then the idea of this can be password. 
this email help is going to be password help and again the ID ID for this is going to be password help so for password you might want to put something like um, and again this would require some client side validation so if you want me to go into that in another video I'm happy to do so but for now we'll just put some text saying password must be over six characters long something like that you might want to uh, make something a little bit more sophisticated if you're doing an actual if you're using it using this for an actual login um, although to be fair yeah this password must be over six characters long would probably be better on a register uh, not a login page so, but never mind <laughs> we'll keep we'll keep it in there uh, I just realized that that's a bit silly um, so the next I'm going to do is do a checkbox and this will just be for remember me so if you check that it'll keep you logged in so we'll do MB4 again keep consistent form check and this will just be an input of type checkbox and the class will be form check input and the ID will be remember so we'll do a label for this as well so label oh, I can spell right label and this is going to be a class form check label and that's going to be for and it'll be the same as the ID we specified here so remember and I'll just we'll just put remember me so this will be displayed next to the checkbox so remember me so let's have a look at this so far so we've got the oh we haven't changed the um we need to change this from email address to password um, we could probably get rid of this password help to be honest I don't think it makes much sense being there to be honest with you um, yeah that, like I said that was probably better that um, password must be six characters long it's probably better on a register form to tell the user um, the pattern their password must match so maybe six characters long alphanumeric that kind of thing so email address and so actually same with this uh, we'll never share your email but anyway uh, so email address password remember me so then next thing we need is a button so the user can press it and submit the form so we'll do a button type equals and then we'll do submit for that class equals btn short for button button success and then width we're gonna go with 100 this is really up to you um, more of a preference thing but I quite like having the width of a hundred so the button spans um, the entire width of the login form uh, but that depends what you're doing the, the way we're doing it now it, I think it looks quite nice so for example uh, if we just there we go so it spans the entire width if your login forms a bit wider it might look a bit weird um, it kind of looks a bit weird like this, but if we did something like, oh, can we put this at the side, dock to the right, there we go. So as it gets smaller, it actually looks, I think it looks quite quite nice like that. Maybe this is a bit too wide, but you can play around with it. Um, but I quite like having it like that. Um, so that button will submit the form. Uh, the last thing we need is a little thing below the button, which will tell the user if they're not registered yet, they can sign up and then we'll put a link to the register page which we're not going to create but essentially it would be the same thing as the login um, but it would go to you know your register route if on the back end if you were to actually use this properly so p class equals and we'll do mb0 the reason why we're doing this is because paragraphs by default have a margin at the bottom and we don't really want that um, because we've already got padding so we don't want the space to be too big so we'll do MB0 and then we're going to do text center. So this will text, this will center the paragraph. Uh, by default, again, the paragraph is 100% width. Um, and we just want this, the text in the center. 
I think that looks better. So we'll do not registered yet. Question mark. And then we'll do a, an anchor tag. Or a link. And for this to be a link, we need to href. And we'll just do a hashtag because we're not really having it linked to anywhere. Um, but, you know, you could link this to a register page if you wanted. Um, class. And we're going to do text decoration none. Um, by default, links have an underline, which doesn't look very nice, I don't think. So um, this this will get rid of the underline, which I think looks a lot better. So sign up here. And that should be about it if we refresh this. Yep, there we go. So that's a simple login form. You can mess around with this, change the style, um, make it maybe make it a bit thinner because this is quite wide for what I would normally do for a, a login of this sort. Um, but yep, it can go across all devices and look fairly good. So that should give you a little kickstart for your login form. Again, register is pretty much the same thing, just with different fields. Um, you'd have password and then maybe like a confirmed password somewhere for first name and last name. Um, like I said, several times several times throughout the video, if you want me to do something on client-side validation, we can sort of use this form and do some JavaScript validation. Uh, if that's something you'd be interested in, let me know in the comments. But uh, that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.